All right, up next, uh, an alternative to layer one uh, protocols. We're going to talk about the various uh, projects that are working to make these things work in the enterprise, the big companies. That's right, Brady. We're going to be heading over to enterprise application land. Uh, first, we have Dr. Silvio McCalley, founder of Algran, Don Song, founder of Oasis, and Nick Sullivan from CloudPair. Uh, Algorand is a uh, financial accessibility blockchain. It's supposed to be fast and easy to use uh, with its own cryptocurrency. Oasis is making encrypted data usable for companies. Uh, so all that data sitting on servers won't be accessible to cyber criminals. And Cloudflare is a giant web security provider that we are curious inside here at Coindesk why they're on a cryptocurrency panel. Uh, yeah, so we'll just start off with Nick. First question for you. So besides protecting many websites, what brings you guys into the cryptocurrency world? Yeah, so my career has been focused on bringing cryptographic technology from obscurity to mainstream adoption. And cryptography itself, it's, uh, it's an incredible tool. It's difficult for regular people to conceptualize what it can actually bring in terms of scaling trust to uh, the entire world. So what I've been doing at Cloudflare is deploying cryptography for all the websites online, which has been a complicated task, but it's uh, simple to explain. Uh, there's a client and a server and a certificate, which is uh, provides a bit of third party trust. And so uh, with two parties, uh, it's relatively straightforward to, to, to think about how you could connect these two and make sure that they, they talk in a, in a trustworthy way. But uh, going to systems where there are more than two participants, um, systems where there's not even any uh, level of account accountability, anybody can, can sort of uh, join permissionless systems are much more complicated and much more challenging to deploy in uh, various instances. So um, what Cloudflare has been doing recently is helping provide uh, a layer of translation from the systems that enterprises are currently using and that the web is really built on. So systems like HTTP uh, that power the internet and power how people browse the internet and uh, help translate that to various systems. So we have a, a product called uh, the Distributed Web Gateway, which allows access to IPFS and Ethereum, uh, those are the only two um, platforms we support at the time, uh, at, as of right now. Um, but it provides something that Cloudflare provides for all websites, which is acceleration and caching and the ability to speak web standards, which is how most of uh, what people access online nowadays uh, is, uh, is is built on. So um, the reason that we're here on the panel is to, to help uh, Ex kind of explain that there's a really interesting opportunity here in interoperability, not only between blockchains, but between legacy systems uh, that use HTTP and the uh, internet as it is currently most popularly used and uh, these new uh, technologies that, it, that introduce peer-to-peer -peer, um, concepts. Okay, that's great. That's great. And um, and obviously these these legacy systems, they're big. They have a lot of users. They want to be fast. The protocol that's known for for being fast, at least that's how it advertises itself, is Algorand. So let's turn to Dr. McCauley. Dr. McCauley, one thing I really wanted to start off with you, and what I was curious about with you being in in this group and talking about enterprise, is I had always understood Algorand's priority as as reaching the the financially financially excluded, the the grassroots of the world. So. How does interfacing with enterprises uh, help achieve that mission? Well, you know, you, you must uh, make sure, but uh, uh, certainly democratizing finance has been a major um, um, goal for, for Algorand. But somehow, how do we do it? <laughs> we do it by making, you know, finance much more efficient, much more affordable, and to lower the bar to participate to very sophisticated uh, um, uh, financial uh, products. Uh, so then, uh, is it surprising that uh, somehow also big enterprises want to take advantage of it? I don't think so, because what is good for, uh, the, for a single user who had never done it before and suddenly has a console of uh, um, a tremendous uh, financial products, so somehow some en more enlightened uh, enterprises will say, you know, you know may actually be good for us too. And, that in, indeed is uh, is the case. You know, um, um, in, uh, we are all in in it together. We are uh, trying to develop a new platform that enables uh, 
um, frictionless uh, finance uh, to work and uh, no friction is good for the big enterprises, for uh, medium, small business, and for single individual and actually for the unbanked as well. So it's no surprise there. So maybe really quickly before we go to the next question, you could just give us a quick example of just like one company or one use case that's interested in Algorand in, in the enterprise. Well, you know, certainly um, I think that one use case that we are seeing is really tokenization, right? So uh, essentially brings uh, liquidity. Um, um, you, you make uh, an asset which was essentially illiquid, extremely liquid, not only that, but once it's liquid, you, you actually you, you have uh, all kinds of uh, auctions and ways to uh, generate uh, these new tokens. You know, in Algorand, you can do it you know, in five seconds. You can generate your new token, and we can you can generate at a layer one, not at this layer two smart contract um, uh, level, which is a little bit iffy, is expensive, is low, and sometimes it's not as, uh, as uh, secure as uh, you want it to be. So to do this uh, at the layer one, that is really a major uh, a major attraction for Algorand. And uh, recently, we have seen also other type of use cases, you know, like you know, um, uh, uh, CBDC. So uh, like the Marshall Islands, I want to issue their digital currency using Algorand. So um, so somehow is uh, to be uh, really a platform I means that that you can accommodate uh, uh, multi uh, use cases. Great. Dr. Song, turning to you, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we constantly hear that data privacy is a company's highest priorities, but time and time again, users such as myself have their data exposed onto the open wide internet and users don't really believe big companies anymore. What is the benefit for a big company to actually lock down this data? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a very good question. So uh, the goal is not just to lock down the data. The goal is how we can establish uh, users' uh, data rights and help them maintain control of their data, and also at the same time to enable data to be utilized still in a privacy-preserving way and in a responsible way. So ultimately, we actually want to build a platform to enable a responsible data economy that benefits both the user side and the enterprise uh, business side. So this way enables users to maintain control of their data and also at the same time to enable data to be utilized. And uh, so for example, today, uh, on one hand, the users don't, like you said, don't trust the businesses and they don't know how their data is being utilized. On the other hand, actually, for a lot of businesses still, uh, it's very difficult for them to utilize data that uh, they really need for their business. And this is what the Oasis Labs has been focusing on, is by combining blockchain and privacy technologies to help users to establish their rights to data and to maintain and um, control of their uh, data. And users can specify how they want their data to be utilized. And by using this platform, they can also track and know how their data is being utilized. Um, so Dr. Yeah, Song, so just, just to follow up there, uh, just to follow up there, for a responsible data economy enables enterprise to address these issues and help users as well. Just to follow up there, though, I think the doubt that folks have is that enterprise even wants to lock things down or give people this sense of privacy. So are you saying it just has been too complicated to be able to both work with data and keep it private and you guys solve that and that's really what's been holding them back? Is, is that the explanation you just gave? I think it's both. I think both in terms of providing a technical solution to this problem about both at the same time, enable data to be used in a controlled way. And also at the same time, uh, from that's why we actually need to raise awareness for users that they need to maintain control of their data and the rest of data and also having this regulatory pressure as well. So businesses, they know that they need to have better technical solutions to address these issues so that uh, it can help them to better comply with the privacy regulations, including like CCP and GDPR as well. So I think with all these forces, we also hope that it helps business um, to better do their business and to utilize this type of responsible uh, data technologies and privacy technologies so that in the end, we can really bring uh, together a win-win situation for both users and businesses. Yeah, so there cool. are many cool. factors in play here. So I want to turn to I want to turn to Nick on this while we're talking about heavy cryptography. I have a substantive question for you, Nick. But first, I have to ask just a just a cultural question for you. As like an old school old school cryptography guy, 
Um, what's your stance on this ongoing battle between crypto and cryptography over the word, use of the word crypto? Can we both just use it? It's not that confusing. What's your take here? Uh, you know, there are a number of words that uh, have multiple meanings and you can derive it from context. I think that's the same thing here. Um, there was some immediate uh, kind of controversy about people having t-shirts and pins that say crypto means cryptography. And um, yeah. I've yeah, definitely experienced uh, certain uh, conversations where people were confused about the things. But um, at, at this point, uh, crypto meaning generally cryptocurrency and, and blockchain is, uh, I, I think at, at this point, it's the most widely known use case in, in general society. So uh, okay, I'm not clear. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you guys are, you guys provide a certain form of security on the web. Uh, what's a common problem you're seeing companies in our space having? Uh, and what's a solution Cloudflare is providing for those sorts of problems? Yeah. So there's two main, two main problems that companies and organizations in this space uh, leverage Cloudflare to help solve. Um, the first is in exchanges. Uh, exchanges need to have a public interface uh, for the most part where uh, users can use web browsers and you know, uh, send money into, into, into this, this uh, different system and uh, have accounts and you know, protecting that website, that web, website's public interface is a really big part of uh, what Cloudflare can do. So, uh, a very large percentage of the cryptocurrency exchanges out there, which act as entry points into uh, these distributed systems, uh, rely on Cloudflare for protecting against spammers, uh, protecting against account hijack, and uh, denial of service attacks, which can be used to manipulate markets. Uh, the other area in which Cloudflare is uh, beginning to play a role is actually in data access to blockchains themselves. So. Um, as a lot of these technologies become useful in various uh, niches inside of enterprises and existing companies that have use cases that overlap with uh, something that's provided by uh, blockchain-based systems, um, the, the expertise that it takes to actually spin up a full node and manage it and maintain connectivity with the network is something that a lot of IT professionals don't have. And... Uh, so some customers are interested in not having to deal with the headache of operationally, say, managing an Ethereum node and dealing with forks and dealing with upgrades and uh, would rather have just an API that allows uh, access to this network for, for certain um, certain things that are only really available on the blockchain. So um, this is the second area in which Cloudflare is uh, growing and providing some um, some needed help uh, for, for this for this ecosystem. Great, great. And Dr. Song, I want to turn to you again. Uh, we've heard you talk in the past about how um, Oasis has been used with the Mount Sinai to study participants um, with different information, location information. Can you share with us a little bit about that Mount Sinai um, information there? <laughs> um. So right, uh, we have actually a number of. Uh, uh, different develop different developers that's actually building on top of the Oasis uh, blockchain uh, platform, and uh, to actually help them again, uh, essentially enable uh, data to be utilized in a, a privacy preserving way, uh, and that's just one of the use cases. And also, we actually have other use cases uh, uh, as well to uh, actually uh, in the time of COVID nineteen help uh, is in the help uh, healthcare data. Uh, to be shared uh, in a secure and privacy preserving way uh, and also other use cases as well. Uh, and also actually uh, they, um, at Oasis and in collaboration uh, with the other entities we have been developing uh, privacy preserving uh, contact tracing uh, technologies as well. Uh, so in general, this type of platform can really help uh, with the healthcare medical data and uh, other types of sensitive data. And in particular at this time, of um, uh, a pandemic and how we can fast uh, you know, react and being able to utilize data, but also at the same time, uh, be able to protect the privacy of data is, uh, uh, is of paramount importance. So let's turn to the privacy of, of money and Dr. back to Dr. McCauley. 
Um, Dr. McCauley, I think the quote of the day, at least so far for me, is Dr. Summers this morning uh, saying that there's too much privacy in money. And as a company that's looking to expand financial inclusion around the world, what's what's your response that uh, that money has too much privacy now? We should actually be able to track it even better. Well, I think it's an excellent question. So, the, uh, I believe uh, in and uh, somehow in the market, and uh, privacy is uh, one component. But uh, we should not uh, forget that we go to the market to see what the merchandise is on sale. Right? I mean, uh, uh, I like being Italian and going to buy fresh tomatoes as soon as I'm allowed to, right, on the market, because I really want to see what is available. So when you impose a layers and layer of the privacy and then uh, guarantee that uh, you, nobody will be able to see what you're buying or, or, or what, you're, what you're selling, it's, uh, it's not exactly the place that uh, somehow uh, makes uh, the best of all of us. So we have to inject privacy where it's really needed, and that is a uh, uh, the key component. So we at Algorand believe that uh, uh, we are both uh, um, a public persona when I go in the street, and I'm going to be a private persona when I go back in my in my office, and I'm even more private when I go back in my room if I have any. And um, so the idea is that uh, I believe uh, we want to uh, let the privacy develop where it wants to be and keep a, a large amount of uh, public interaction. So we believe uh, that the right design is a co-chain design where there is uh, a bunch of, of, of chains that run their own consensus and they go on the main chain in a transparent and public way to have a really a marketplace uh, where um, very transparent. So I believe that to find the natural place for privacy is where uh, um, uh, this battle is going to be won. Okay, so we have very little time left. So just a quick lightning round for each one of you. Let's go Nick, Don, and then Silvio. Just tell us really quickly, what is the, the immediate use case, the immediate like sort of crypto adjacent use case that you see the most obvious uh, strength on your platform and that you want to get customers in, you know, next week, next month? Uh, so Nick, Don, uh, Silvio, super fast. So um, very super fast, integrating blockchain data into websites and web services in a classical cool. way. Um, Great, that's Don. And so we are working, um, uh, our platform uniquely enables what we call tokenization of data. So essentially we are moving beyond just tokenization of financial assets and so on, really moving to the uh, next generation and, uh, of this, uh, uh, essentially uh, building a responsible data economy. Awesome, thank you. Lastly, Dr. McCauley. Well, tokenization, tokenization, and tokenization. Without tokenization, there is no blockchain, there is nothing. The future is tokenized. Two, two of you then. Both are way 